Okay, um, let's see. I wanted to do another vlog thingy, like for a week now. A couple of uh, ideas in my mind. Like, uh, first thing. <clears throat> with no special guests, you know, and uh, what were they getting at? Yeah, um, cause of death and whatnot, and uh, second and third degree, uh, uh, because for uh, Derek Chauvin, I know how to pronounce his name, and uh, yeah, interestingly, what uh, neither the media told anywhere, nor any of the, the media very far left-leaning and uh, Fortune very far right-leaning. I don't know if Fortune has a political agenda, so to say, you know? Because the funny thing is, let's suppose... Uh, let's suppose everyone would be far right-wing and whatnot. And let's suppose Fortune would exist in such a world then 4chan would be the very first place to be the most left and progressive out of all these sites. Just so, um, you know, it's the momentum, it's the spirit, like, what is trendy right now? Okay, I'm totally against it, you know? And, uh, yeah. Think what the far left media kind of left out, and uh, Far right, uh, 4chan, uh, social platform, so to say, and left out is like Derek Chauvin, was also off duty uh, bouncer for a security club, also as George Floyd. Interestingly, you know, and this kind of, uh, if you do this sort of a connection, and I don't know if these two know, knew of each other or not. And uh, this kind of adds a certain momentum to, you know, Derek Chauvin killing George Floyd, because this makes it sort of like purposefully a hate crime, so to say, maybe. And uh, yeah, like uh, <clears throat> This was a pretty unnecessary death. And the uh, interesting thing is, like, uh, the death was unnecessary. He had quite a criminal past, you know, but he was also recovering from a lot of shit, which is a good thing. He also made some rap albums, so I didn't know this. And, uh, was doing social media stuff like kids violence is bad, blah blah blah. And uh, got a driver's license for drug driving and even somewhat uh, rehabilitated from Corona. I also didn't know that this was happening at the time. And uh, yeah, the interesting thing about this is like uh, 
the media outcry or generally the people outcry like uh, uh, I think like uh, the family got like 27 million dollars of uh, you know money out of the lawsuit because uh, I don't know what you can't put a price tag on a human's life but uh, yeah they won't die uh, poor that's for sure a lot of uh, campaigns have like raised through the roof enough money for the families, which is at least a good thing out of all this misery. But still, what is interesting is the reaction of the people, you know, like uh, burning down stores and protesting and destroying shit and whatnot. This wasn't handled very well. And especially for me, it would be interesting. The thing is, you have to read sort of between the lines. And especially in such a case, what happened after this. Because I think like, this did like a hard U-turn in the um, police system, so to say. Like I think uh, a lot of cops are now like, oh shit man. This is like a black guy, so we can't like uh, prosecute him normally. On one hand, on the other hand, there are still racist cops, and on the next hand, there are like the people like looting, and destroying, and setting places on fire and whatnot, and uh, it distorts sort of the objective reality that we live in and uh, I would be kind of interested how is it looking right now are we like uh, oh, police got defunded you know a lot of people out cry, out cried like defund the fucking police defund the, defund the police and I wonder if uh, yeah if that is really everything that needs to be changed like I don't know how many cops are racist, 5%, 25%, 50%, 75%, 75%. But yeah, uh, let's say you defund the police, you know, this is like, I think it doesn't matter how many people you like, uh, fire from the jobs, especially police people and whatnot, the police stations. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's 1 million cops or 10 cops, the, I think the ratio will be still, you know, like the same. <laughs> so there is that. Uh, okay, nice. So now we have only one racist cop out of 10 instead of uh, 10,000 racist cops out of, uh, I don't know, what is it? 100,000? Yeah. So, um, Will this ever fix anything? And uh, is there like uh, uh, a fair prosecution for everyone? Generally speaking, like uh, America is like really interesting when it comes to <laughs> this racial stuff because, like, uh, fuck man, at some point you guys gotta get over it. You gotta get over with it, you know? one part of this is like these extremely left people like uh, fetishizing uh, cuckolds and whatnot, BBC <laughs> cuckold stuff. And on the other hand, you have like, yeah, we should kill all these people. <laughs> this is like also, I love these both extremes. Like, there is no middle ground. There is no place for a uh, objective middle ground. You know? <laughs> And uh, yeah, that would be so interesting. And I think, uh, I think, I think a certain part of this also comes from uh, the fact that um, yeah, we are still like uh, the N word because this is a YouTube video. YouTube video I'm uploading here, or I will be uploading. Um, because I'm a pussy when it comes to like hardcore confrontation with uh, social media and the video platforms and whatnot. I won't pronounce the N word in its fullest, 
but I think it's part of the problem. Like the only way to heal the soul apart, uh, erase diversity, whatever, far left and far right. I think a part of the problem is exactly because of the N word, you know? And in order to solve this fucking issue, which will never ever be solved, because if we solve this problem, I think we're uh, at a time where we live in such luxurious uh, lifestyle, moving changes, whatnot, you know, we have such a quality of life, we've reached such a quality of life point that we, we just, uh, we don't want to solve every problem because then we get bored. No, we stopped at a certain progression level and from there on we said we have to keep a certain amount of problems otherwise we will get bored. And this is where the N-word falls into this category. By finally, like, sort of, uh, quitting racism and whatnot, I think a lot of people would get bored. So we have to create this, uh, a faux conflict. This, this non-existent real conflict. But if we ever wanted to solve this conflict, we definitely should start with uh, slurs, slurs, racial slurs in any sort of form, you know. I got called a Nazi a lot, and like a shitty crowd, I'm a fucking racist, because I'm white, even though I'm not completely white, even though I have like uh, outlandish uh, roots and backgrounds from other families, stemming from Europe and whatnot. And uh, like most of the theories like suggest that all the people came from Africa. So there is also this and that. And there is also like... Uh, yeah. But uh, people love to be racist to racist or racist to other races that they don't think uh, are... Yeah, not worthy to their, their own race or whatnot. I don't, I don't care about this eugenics bullshit and uh, all right stuff. But uh, yeah, in order to solve this fucking conflict, everyone, like seriously, in order to keep keep start the healing, we have to do like uh, a chanting. Everyone has to say the N word at least one minute a day. You know, like. Instead of like American classes, so I see or heard or read, they're like everyone, I think like from high school to middle school or whatnot. And this is like, I pledge allegiance to the American flag and whatnot. Cut this bullshit, man, you know? Uh, in Germany, we also had like certain, uh, I think like my very first junior school years, you know, I also, we also had like, uh, this religion bullshit, like, uh, uh, dear father, hallowed be thy name and whatnot, you know. Uh, you have to cut this religion crap and you have to go exactly to the other direction. Everyone should say at least like 30 seconds or one minute. Everyone, like literally everyone should say the N word. Like a, like a chant, like a mantra, you know. And uh, just to normalize this word, and only when we reach a certain amount, because like these N words, you know, they collect in us, they eat all. And black people should be able to call white people the N word. This is very important for the healing process. And white people should be able to call black people the N word. And everyone should call everyone else the n-word you know it doesn't matter uh, white to white black to black black to black is very common since a lot of years but uh, white to white is uncommon i know we have like wigger you know i can say wigger without a problem because uh, as far as i know there is no real um problem so far. or um i also read like people from uh, certain desert areas are called like ascent and words, you know. But seriously, <laughs> in all seriousness, we need to stop. Uh, we need to say the N word like on a constant basis to get like uh, 
these N words, you know, the uh, everyone is saving them up, like uh, sometimes. This is like when you say fuck or shit, you know, something breaks, or you get angry at something or someone, and you need to say the N word in order to release stress. And it's not just to, uh, uh, in a defamatory sense, you know, it's not just to hurt people, but it's more in a, th a therapeutic sense, you know, you need to cursing in order to stay healthy. This is like, uh, I heard this in a German, on a German side, on an English side, I don't know. Uh, you have like these stupid ideas, you know, like uh, brain farts, you know, like uh, what would happen if I close my eyes and just uh, walked, uh, uh, Jay walked over the street, you know, without looking, would a car hit me? And you should never ever prosecute this idea. This is like the N-word execution. You should never ever do this. But you should sort of convert it into something helpful, like uh, writing down this stupid idea. You know, like what would happen if you jaywalked uh, the street blindly, you know. Probably a car crash, probably death or coma or something like this. And uh, in order to stop the fucking healing, like everyone should say the N word. In order to make this up, what we've saved, you know, like saving up the N words. It's not just the N word itself, but there is also like a percentage. You know, this is like uh, when you invest into stocks or cryptocurrency or, or I don't know NFTs or whatnot, uh, or rare metals. There is like uh, what is it called a certain profit margin. And this is the same thing for the N-word. The moment you st don't start using it, there's like a certain profit margin of negative energy, you know, adding up to like... Uh, sometimes, sooner or later, you will explode, you know. You have to let these brain parts out. And the N-word is definitely a brain part word in this category. And uh, yeah, we should definitely make up for all this time lost in regards to that. And only then, uh, the healing will begin. Then, uh, yeah, well, 70 minutes for just this one topic, <laughs> can't get out of hand. Then the next thing is like, uh, what was on my mind like last week, like I'm staying at a hotel right here. And, um, a lot of you Ukrainian refugees also came to this hotel since it's also a refugee camp, sort of, you know? And this is a good thing, like, uh, political refugees, well, I don't see really a problem with that, as long as uh, <laughs> there is no terroristic uh, refugees or whatnot. This sounds already racist, even though I don't want to sound racist. No, but most of the refugees are logically uh, not bad, you know. Uh, they have different culture or whatnot, or different lifestyles, different language. And uh, they're used to different standards, but that's it at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, I'm, like, seriously, I'm happy that like these Ukrainian guys, these Ukrainian N-words, so to say, I'm happy that uh, N-words from parents. <laughs> uh, I'm happy that they made it here, you know? And I'm happy if they can, like, find refuge in Switzerland, Austria and whatnot. But uh, the thing is, since they're here, and my ISP is, like, very limited and shitty here, it was shitty before they arrived, now it gets shitty again. Now, the simple fortune uh, rage bait posting post would be, ah, oh, these fucking refugees, uh, worse than my internet, so uh, yeah, that's the end of the story, that's their fault, but I'm thinking to a certain extent, you know, like, uh, if Putin didn't start the fucking war, you know, uh, all of this wouldn't have happened, and a lot of people are like, uh, chanting this sort of in a chorus, like, uh, Putin, how about we stop this fucking war thing, huh, and stop, uh, stopping with the invasion, and, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, 
if you think about it logically, Putin literally made my own personal internet collection bad. And I don't give a fuck about anything. Like, uh, not anything. This sounds like such a fucking edgy statement. But I'm happy where I am right now, you know? I could be in a worse spot, I could be in a better spot. But uh, things are pretty swell so far. But Putin said, no, fuck this Merlin guy, you know? Like, how about I'll fucking ruin his day by starting a war with uh, Ukraine, yeah? Ukraine, Ukraine, fuck, I got this from another friend. Ukraine, you know? How about I start a war with Ukraine? Therefore, a lot of people will seek refuge in other countries, like, let's say, Germany. And by that, they will uh, be stationed somewhere where Merlin is. So this motherfucker, like, literally worsened my opinion of him. Uh, I mean, there are nice memes of him where he's riding a bear and whatnot, you know, and acting like a giga shot and alpha. Uh, alpha. And I also saw, like, uh, he also made, uh, for other things, he made, like, good points here and there. But the fact that he's, like, uh, for over 15 years, I don't know, 20 years, how long has it been since he's, like, uh, president, chancellor uh, of uh, Russia? This is, like, a dictatorship badly disguised as a democracy and it's like bothering you know? gives you stuff to think and it's not just that it's just like yeah why did this guy you know like fuck man I was sort of neutral to all of this because it didn't like really touch me you know but uh, this has momentum you know this is like literally uh, worsening my life quality because fucking Putin I have worse internet. That is the first thing. Then there's like, oh fuck. And there's like, uh, the next thing, which is very funny and ironic, you know. This is literally the definition of irony. Um, there's like a government program where you can like, uh, take refugees into your home. You get sort of, uh, paid or whatnot. So, um, uh, you get the social component. And you get the financial component, monetary component, so that is never wrong. So it's sort of applied for this program. The funny thing is, in order to apply, you need to scan your uh, personal ID, you know, and uh, you need to send a photo and upload it. And the upload connection, I'm not shitting you. Like uh, most of the times, when uh, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Oh, 6 p.m. It's like literally I have like point eight five megabytes per second download and point two five twenty five megabytes per second upload. So uh, on one hand we have Germany with its bad internet. Uh, infrastructure promising every year we will improve we will improve you can't believe these fuckers one single word on the second hand we have my poor choice of an ISP I chose O2 because they're cheaper and I'm a cheapskate but then um, you know this is like also influencing this whole general thing then the next thing is the location I'm living in is also not very big and the smaller crowded cities of course have worse internet makes sense right and then the next thing is the refugees like taking up the internet okay everything fine so far I'm not against uh, speaking against these refugees but it's the fact that it's worsening my internet connection and then I want to apply in order to help out these guys you know and I'm lacking the fucking internet. So they're sort of hurting themselves even though they're not aware of it. You know? And they're not even they they can't even do anything against this. 
I thought like, uh, <laughs> I thought like, what was it? Imagine, I told like every Ukrainian guy at this uh, refugee home like, guys, you need to stop your fucking internet usage so I can register for this uh, Ukrainian refugee help program so I can help one guy of you all, you know, like 100 people or so. Then I come up there like, yo, all stop your fucking internet usage for a couple of minutes. <laughs> so it can help like 1% or even less of you guys helping out, you know, like, beautiful, just beautiful. The fact that, fuck man, I'm getting really tired. That's the second thing. And the third thing, the third thing is like, um, I was chatting with this girl and uh, I was meeting her from, I was meeting her on uh, Interpels. It's like a, um, a site and a chat service with an app uh, where you can connect with people to exchange for languages or flirting or long distance. Uh, snail mail or whatnot or just chatting in general and I was talking with this girl allegedly she came from China and she worked in Australia I'm saying allegedly because you never know you know and uh, I was getting somewhat along with her she had a really cute voice and whatnot but she didn't like fully grasp and understand like English language like I'd say she got, she understood like 60 or 70 percent. And I told her like a lot of, not too much personal stuff, but some of personal stuff after one month. You know, because like, you should never ever DDoS yourself, you should never dox yourself to, to a maximum. Not DDoS, I mean doxing. Uh, because this is unhealthy, a lot of people tend to dox themselves. Like, this is also part of the human experience, like manip manipulating yourself. Because you're feeling too good right now, you think, like, I'm king of the world, so I can tell everyone where I'm living. Uh, like, Drachenlord, uh, you know? And uh, what will they do, you know? <laughs> but uh, I think the good thing all about me is, like, I'm just too mediocre to attract any haters, I'd say. Even though, if I would attract any haters, first of all, I would have, I, I would need to grow some balls because, like, uh, Dothenlot is getting like stalkers for decades now, I think, you know, and uh, you need a thick skin for this. You should never ever forget this. But there is also the fact of no promotion is bad promotion, so this is something you should consider. Uh, even if I attracted haters, I think my <laughs> channel would accelerate and explode and go up. But that's the problem, man. I'm just too neutral about all of this, you know. I would need to start uh, shouting and getting angry, getting pissed at people, insulting them. But I just can't, man. Uh, I was never ever in this sort of momentum. Maybe on drugs <laughs> in the past. But now I'm just too old and tired, as you can hear right now. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, this girl. Uh, I got along with her, and uh, like we were exchanging messages on a daily basis for one and a half months, you know. And uh, the funny thing is, like I said, her, I told her, like uh, in theory, there would be a possibility. That she's a guy, you know, this is like what comes to my mind at first. First of all, because I'm also catfishing on a regular basis. And second of all, like, uh, maybe it's a money scam, maybe it's a couple, you know. One guy is writing the cutesy girl chats and asking for financial stuff, you know. And the second thing would be, um, yeah, the girl doing the voice messages and you know, said the chances are low, you know. And I was just joking, like this is my sort of dark sarcasm. But uh, she didn't understand, it's like, I don't know what you mean, you're attacking my personality. And I said, no, that is not what a personality is, you know. 
And I told her, like I explained to her two, three, four times. And then I said, fuck it, man. It's like talking to a fucking wall, you know? Like this uh, will lead to nowhere. Then I, I made like one last effort and said, look, maybe there is some sort of translation error. Maybe I didn't fully convey what I was saying, you know? And she said, like, no, you're like seriously insulting me. Uh, and I said, okay, goodbye. It was nice talking to you. And uh, holy shit, man. This is like amazing. Like, uh, this sounds like generalizing, but there's no other way around it. Like, uh, all the women I've talked so far, they're either not interested, you know, okay, that's fine. Or they're lacking, like, language skills. Or they're not interested in lacking language skills. And, uh, I'm a reasonable guy, you know. If I do some shit wrong, I'll admit that shit. But, uh, wow, man. At some point, you gotta, you gotta think, like, how do these people, like, manage to breathe? How do these people, like, manage to take one breath, breathe in, breathe out, and uh, how do they manage to sleep and eat and drink and piss and shit and whatnot, you know? How do these people, like, survive a day after day after day, you know? Like, uh, this kind of amazes me, because I'm getting along with a lot of people, but sometimes, seriously, man, why bother, like, chatting or talking or writing with me in English if, like, 50% of what you're saying sometimes comes out wrong, sometimes you understand stuff wrong, sometimes you want to be insulted or angry, like, it's a mode, like, it's a certain switch, and you can't change the value of it or the variable. This pisses me off, like, there is no real... Uh, human interaction, like at some point you start thinking like, am I talking with an animal or uh, an object, this other person on the other side of the screen, on the other side of the globe in Australia, uh, should have somewhat rational thoughts, you know, but there's like nothing coming back, and this still amazes me, you know, as people still run around doing the thing yeah and uh, wow I was also talking like uh, she all gets flirty but I thought this is like this is like high alert uh, you know Drachenlord marriage stuff for example well I think uh, Chris Chan also had probably like some fake troll girls like hitting him up like Oh, Christian, you're so cute, I want to marry you, you know? Might also be a possibility. And, uh, yeah, that's why these, uh, Darlot and Christian, Christian, they're like, uh, sort of martyrs, you know, for the cause of knowledge, because if these guys wouldn't have existed, if people wouldn't have made fun of them, if I wouldn't have used the internet, reading about them, I would have never known about this, you know? Yeah, I would have been naive and some girl without a profile pic uh, contacted me and said like, Oh, I love you, Merlin. I want to marry you. But first you have to give me money and then we will meet up. And then after one day, oh sorry, something came in between. Like I'm in custody in the, at the airport or the embassy of my country or your country. You need to transfer more money, you know, like uh, Roman scam baiting and whatnot. And you need sort of people to get tricked, you know. This is the hurtful part of the story. Some people need to bleed out in order for you to see this, to say, this won't be happening to me, you know. And you will tell yourself, yeah, I'm not that stupid. This won't happen to me. I'm smart enough. No, you aren't. You just were lucky enough to see that somebody else got ripped off. This uh, gave you like uh, the advantage of knowing that you might get ripped off. To be cautious every fucking millisecond of your fucking life, you know. Otherwise you will 
all into the same trap, I'd say, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so I always had this sort of possibility in my mind, like, this, like, a Roman scam baiting couple trying to rip me off. And she was all flirty, like, yeah, I love you, and uh, hope you're well, and uh, I'm your girlfriend, and stuff like, holy shit, this person doesn't really know much about me. And, like, uh, I said, like, uh, I, made, I made, like, I gave soft clues, like, uh, if you really want to, want to connect with me, like, basic things, like, uh, you could check out this song, you know, tell me what you think about it. It's that basic with me, you know. And, uh, like, yeah, I will see. This is, like, 100%, I fucking hate the whole humanity point, you know, like, uh, I think musicians only have ears, other people don't have ears at this point. <laughs> this is the, uh, like when you s send somebody a song, you can try it out yourself, you know? Pick one person in your personal uh, life, the good friend or whatnot. If it's a really, really good friend, a really fucking good friend, and you've, you've known this friend for over 10 or 15 years, then this friend will be able to listen to a song of yours that you sent, you know? Either a song you made or a song that you recommend, or even an album. Like, this is the highest level of trust. If a person listens to an album that you sent the person, uh, I ride with this N word, I will die with this N word. That's all I'm saying, you know? Like, um, I have these sort of people in high regards. If you manage to listen to a song or a whole album, like, Kudos, man. Like, I can respect it. You're definitely able to, uh, <laughs> you're one uh, evolutionary step about other people, I'd say, because a lot of people can't do this. And it's not because, like, uh, they're malicious or they, they have, like, a malicious intent. It's just, like, uh, they're, it's programmed in the DNA to be, uh, Oblivious, ignorant, forgetful, deaf. This is how it feels like, you know? And, uh, yeah. So, she, of course, she never responded to her. She sent like one or two songs. Not very long songs, you know? But still, no fucking response. So, uh, if you ever want to know me, <laughs> this sounds fucking, uh, uncool or yeah I think like you should be able to manage to listen to a 3 30 or 5 minute songs if you can't do this like get the fuck out of here man you know this is like my minimum requirement maybe I make some enemies with this yeah but uh, I don't know that's why I stop recommending people anything in general because like they will never ever watch it. Like uh, this the basic thing like everyone recommends this and this. Have you seen this? Have you watched this? Have you heard this? Have you read this? Uh, have you studied this? You know? Have you checked out this hobby? But the moment you suggest something, uh huh, uh -huh I don't care. That's what you're getting always, always, fucking always. And I fucking hate this about people. Maybe this is just a Germany problem, but I think this is like worldwide applicable, you know. But yeah, blah blah blah, all the cultures, no man, I'm telling you, a lot of people love to, they love to give output, but they hate to receive input. And when it's input, then only selected echo chamber input, you know. I'm uh, looking for... Today I'm left, because I say I'm left, so I'm far left leaning, so I'm only looking for far left uh, media. And tomorrow I decide I'm a far right expert, I see myself uh, far right, you know. So I will only look at far right stuff. So when the far right says, like, uh, outlandish people steal our jobs and they commit most of the crimes and whatnot, that it's true, because I'm an expert in this, that's the first thing. The second thing is, like, I'm on the good guy side, right? The opposition is the bad. 
We have the Osmorosus Den mentality, you know, I'm on the good guy's side. Why don't these bad guys just understand that they're on the bad side? You know, how can they be this ignorant? And then there is like, <laughs> fucking American politics, man. You have these two parties, man. You have Democrats and Republicans. And people are like, seriously, you know, like, I wonder how much of this is like a LARPing, you know? How much of this is role-playing? Are they real? I can't, I cannot, uh, you know? Well, the, the, the blurry lights kind of become blurrier every day. Yeah. So, um, I'd say I'm at the end of this. Uh, hope you enjoyed my ramble, and hope to hear from you sooner or later. Goodbye and good night.